Good morning, it's Monday, May 22nd. To tell you something, I really haven't been paying much attention to the Republican presidential candidates. I didn't even realize how many of them have already declared to run, because the only one that seems to be getting much attention is Donald Trump. Now, I know that Nikki Haley declared to run, And I thought that DeSantis declared, but he hasn't. And Tim Scott has just filed to run for president. He's the black senator from South Carolina. And he's the only black Republican senator in the Senate. Scott actually launched a presidential exploratory committee in April. And he has emphasized his evangelical faith and his experience as growing up the son of a single mother. So he shall find himself as somebody who has taken advantage of individual responsibility and said his approach to politics was guided by the belief that the U.S. is the land of opportunity, not the land of oppression. And I don't, I haven't thought much of Tim Scott as a black man because most black men who reach the prominence that he has attained have developed an image that people can relate to. The image of a fighter, the image of somebody who has overcome hardship. And obviously he has done that. But to me, he seems too meek and too mild-mannered. And besides that, he adheres to the Republican credo. So I'm glad he's in the race. But I don't really feel that he will make a great presidential candidate. But he did do the intelligent thing in the in that he took several months to make his decision and he's been testing the waters and I guess the waters have been clear enough for him to go ahead with his presidential campaign. And he's got a name for his campaign which is called Faith in America. So he's visited several states early, Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. But this is the first time I saw him making news that I was able to get my hands on. So that's it for Tim Scott. So as I said before, I really haven't been paying much attention to who's up and ready to run for president as a Republican. And it turns out that there are more than just Tim Scott, because we know that DeSantis is getting ready, but he hasn't finished his filing yet. And I would hope that in his filing that he's rejected by the commission, because this is a man that has proved that he's a total idiot with his book banning and his don't say gay law, which caused the battle with Disney. And anybody who wants to take on a company that employs 75,000 people and is a main tax contributor to his state is a fool. You know, he made a big mistake with his don't say gay law, etc. And just because they spoke out against him doesn't mean you stand up and defend yourself for your idiotic, your idiotic action. So I would scratch DeSantis off the list, and many in the beginning thought he was a contender because at some point in time, He was equal to Trump in the polls, but now he's fallen way behind him. So if I was the commission, I wouldn't even give him a chance to run. And Nikki Haley, we know that she's already filed and that she's a contender, a minor contender, but still in the running. And when Nikki Haley was the ambassador to the UN, I liked her. I like an awful lot of what she was saying at that point in time. But then became a Trumpster. When she left the UN and went out and decided that she was going to run for president and made statements that favored Trump and agreed with many of his policy decisions, and I'm not so sure that those weren't 
political reactions, that she really wasn't in that step, but she felt it would make her a more viable candidate. She lost me entirely. So I would not want her to be the president of the United States and continue the lunacy of Donald Trump. So based upon the fact that she had good credentials, governor, ambassador to the UN, well-spoken at one time, but then she sold herself down the river by becoming a Trumpite. So she's off my list. And let me tell you who else is in the running. Because it surprised me, actually, that there were so many people already in the running. There's the former governor of Arkansas, Asa Hutchinson. Now, he's way behind in the polls, and he's struggling to keep up with his competitor. But he's 74 years old, and he's another Trump-leaning candidate. But he believes that the support for President Trump is inflated. He doesn't think that Trump has that many people supporting him. So obviously the man is not 100% there. And who wants another 70-something year old man running for president anyhow? And he's in for the long haul and he hopes that his support will grow. I don't see how support for him will grow. He hasn't made himself really that visible He's kind of stuck nearby in the middle of the country. He believes that people are looking for new leadership and a new direction. But I don't see him providing any kind of new direction. He wants to bring out the best in our country. And if we have another man like Trump running for the presidency, that is not the best in our country. So I'd scratch him off the list pretty early. And then we have the American entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy. He's 37 years old and he has virtually no political experience that I could find on his resume. But he was the founder of a biopharmaceutical company called Revant Sciences in 2014, and he had been working as an investment partner. So he'd been a successful businessman, but that doesn't give you the credentials to run for president of the United States. So, while he has good education, Harvard, Yale University, Yale Law School, I would not be voting for him. He couldn't, as far as I know, put the people together and get this country in shape because politics is not like business. And then we have Larry Elder, an American right-wing political commentator and conservative talk radio host. So that's all he's got going for him, and he's 74 years old. Oh, no, he's and he's 71 years old. So we don't need another old guy, and especially a guy who has no real political experience. But he's got good credentials, education, law school, etc. But he's still a talk show host, and that doesn't make him a politician or a man capable of running a country, and he's starting at the age of 71. So you got to scratch him off your list also. And that's it. Candidates for president on the Republican side in 2024. So far, have a great day. Bye.